Hey guys, Zot here, and welcome to a video we've been very excited to make, and it's our 8.1 Arena PvP tier list for 3v3. In this video, we're going to be sharing with you what are currently considered both the S and A tier compositions in both European and American metas. Don't worry if your class isn't in this video, however, as we'll be doing a part two containing some of the less meta comps and the weaker classes. To begin, let's start with the S tier comps. These are currently the best compositions based off both tournament and ladder play and are all individually strong for their own reasons, which we'll cover. First up, we have Windwalker, Death Knight, Healer. Played with mainly either a Holy Paladin, Mistweaver, Restoration Shaman or Restoration Druid, Windwalker Death Knight, known as the Walking Dead by many, is strong for a multitude of reasons, and here's why we've placed it at S tier. First is due to its defensive capabilities. Both Windwalker and Death Knight are both incredibly difficult to kill. Death Knights heal for ridiculous amounts with Death Strike and Transfusion, whilst Monks have a vast amount of defensive cooldowns to counter both melee and casters. So not only does this composition do good into other cleaves, it also does equally if not better when up against casters. On the offensive side of things, Windwalker brings a Mortal Strike effect in the form of Rising Sun Kick, as well as both classes having great consistent pressure. And on top of that, they also have incredibly strong offensive cooldowns. Combine Touch of Death with an Abomination or Apocalypse from your Death Knight and say bye bye. Windwalker Death Knight is in our opinion best with a Mistweaver, however works with any healer pretty much as mentioned. Combining just how tanky these classes are and how many defensive cooldowns you have available to rotate through, on top of the very strong consistent pressure, makes Walking Dead our first S tier comp. Next up we've got Windwalker, Destruction Warlock and then either a Mistweaver or Restoration Shaman Healer. No fancy name for this one yet other than Windwalker Destro, but again let's look at why this is ranked so highly. Windwalkers are obviously incredibly difficult to kill. The vast mobility and defensive cooldowns make them a difficult target. And then add how inherently tanky Destruction Warlocks are thanks to Demon Armor and just how their mastery works and you've got yourself a very tanky composition yet again. It's going to take a lot to whittle either of these classes down, and a lot of the time you're going to have to be focusing on shutting down Chaos Bolts, so it gives your healer an even easier time healing. Destruction Warlock on its own, if tunneled, isn't really that much of a threat, but just picture a Windwalker going around doing whatever he wants. Windwalkers have some of the strongest solo kill potential in the game, and not only that, they are great class at enabling casters. Things like Ring of Peace, an AoE stun and even Disarms and Roots allow for your Warlock to be getting off those big bolts. Just a very strong composition with consistent damage and even stronger burst if your lock is able to cast. Again, we've ranked this composition so highly due to how hard it is to kill, combined with the consistent pressure and also the ability to one-shot. What healer you play with also determines what crowd control you have. If you're playing with a Mistweaver, looking for paralyzes, interferes on healers, and then leg sweeping DPS enabling your Warlock to cast is how you should look to set up kills. Playing with a Shaman, you can do a lot better versus casters, having your Shaman help enable the Destruction Warlock with things like grounding totems so he's able to immune interrupts, or even just giving him Sky Fury to really help boost that bolt damage. Demon Hunter Death Knight has been taking both ladder and tournament play by storm, once again bringing all the things an S tier comp needs, does well into almost anything and doesn't really have any hard counters, so let's take a look at what makes this so good. Once again, it's of course a Death Knight, we've all seen how overtuned Death Strike is. There is nothing like hitting a Death Knight for half his health and then just having him heal to fall in one global. Yeah, well, they're incredibly difficult to kill. Add on top of that a class that you can barely touch in the form of a Demon Hunter with their once again plethora of defensive cooldowns. Blur, Neverwalk, AoE Darkness, Crazy South Hills, this comp gives you two melees that basically sustain themselves. Moving on, I was going to talk about offensive cooldowns, but then I remembered Mana Burn is a thing. This is the sole reason this composition is so good. Your best offensive is literally the fact that you are so difficult to kill, and landing mana burns onto healers is almost always going to secure you that mana lead. 
eventually leading to the win. However, yeah, this comp has still great offensive pressure, with Metamorphosis and Death Knight cooldowns. Also, with both classes having very strong consistent damage, you're going to be really struggling for mana when up against it. It's just an incredibly annoying composition to face, lots of interrupts, lots of damage, lots of defensive cooldowns, and very difficult to kill. Add all this with the fact that you're going to be getting mana burned off cooldown and you've got yourself an S tier comp. Also, if you think this composition is strong now, just wait until you see it with full gear. Best in slot gear and Azerite traits really pushes this composition to that next level. Well, this wouldn't be a tier list without Rogue Mage, would it? Ever a staple of both ladder and competitive play, the best Rogue Mage variant currently is of course Assassination Rogue, Frost Mage, Restoration Druid. So, same as before, let's get into why this is ranked so highly. Well, do I really need to say anything? If you've faced either a Restoration Druid or Frost Mage, you can understand why this composition is so hard to kill. But of course, the mobility of both Mage and Druid, combined with the slows and both having a spammable crowd control, makes this an incredibly difficult comp to stick to. And if you ever do build up any pressure, it's easy for them to just crowd control you and go for a reset. Combine this with some overtuned druid healing, mage defensives, and the fact Rogue can only really die to melee cleaves, and if you do go him, you're going to have to deal with two casts to spam in CC. Sum this all up, and you've got a great defensive composition. Also, we've all played versus Rogue Mage, or at least seen it in action. It's one of the burstiest comps in the game. Rogue brings the lockdown and kidney shot and consistent damage, and Mage brings the burst often combining their damage with some crowd control onto the healer, making it an impossible task to heal through. Rogue Mage has historically been almost on, let's say, a timer, having to set up goes and burn through your defensive cooldowns. Assassination Frost Rester Druid is different, however. This comp is incredibly strong in dampening. Rogue locks you down and deals great consistent damage, whilst the Mage and Druid just sit at the pillar being untouchable just usually ending the game in either a counter spell or blind setup. Now, if you've ever faced this composition as a melee cleave, you know just why it's so high rated on this list. It's been so consistent both in ladder and tournament play as a counter to all things melee. But not only is it strong against melee, have fun trying to beat it as a caster when you're being slowed and they're just running around a pillar, dealing instant damage and killing you inside of lassos. However, enough of that, let's take a look at why it's so high. Mobility, slows, lockdown, crowd control, off hills, this composition has it all. Go on the Ellie and you'll have a Mage and Druid free cast in Polymorph and Clone. Go on the Mage and you'll have a lasso and off hills to deal with. And that's if you can even touch any of them to begin with. Also, you might think, well, Resto Druids can oom, right? Not in this comp, they can't. Combine both the slows of Mage and Elemental, and there is no way you're going to be stopping a Druid drinking throughout the game. This comp's only weakness may be, in fact, Rogues, as Elemental have always struggled against Rogues due to the constant lockdown inside of stuns. On the offensive side of things, this composition has crazy burst damage. Combining things like Sky Fury, Stormkeeper, and Frozen Orb can easily take any unsuspecting enemy 100 to 0 in a few seconds. Not to mention, you have all the CC in the world, with Polymorph, Cyclone, a double interrupt, as well as two stuns on a short cooldown. Again, this composition is strong thanks to the Frost Mage Restoration Druid synergy. It's a complete hard counter to all things melee and really plays around that. Most of the time, it's surviving until you can basically tilt your enemies to death from not being able to hit any of you. But yeah, great crowd control, great burst, great utility, and great in the meta. That's of course why we've put it at our S tier rank. Not seen so much in tournament play, but more so on ladder, the Fire Mage Holy Paladin variant of Ellie Mage is equally as strong. Same as the Frost Mage Restoration Druid synergy, Holy Paladin Fire Mage relies on that synergy. Holy Paladin brings those much needed added cooldowns to help you survive and kite, whilst Ellie can focus on stopping all crowd control onto your Paladin. But let, let's take a look at why, again, this is an S tier composition. Paladins have the most cooldowns in the game. Freedom, Sack, Bop, Bubble, combine this with Fire Mage and you've got yourself some great defensive synergy. Holy Paladins struggle with avoiding CC. However, but what does Ellie do? Yes, it straight removes that weakness with grounding and shear and just its general disruption. Again, a lot of kiting and cooldowns to go through before you can score a kill versus composition. 
When I spoke about burst earlier, it was nothing in comparison to what this composition is capable of. We've all seen the fire mage and elemental one shots now. Picture that together. This composition is ridiculous when it comes to burst damage. Trink it once and they still have combustion or stormkeeper and it's over. However, you've still got great CC provided by the mage and the stuns to go with it from the elemental shaman and holy paladin. This one is just a great all around fun composition. Might be a bit more gimmick one shot than the rest, but it's still one of the better comps in this game currently. However, a lot of it relies on playing around the mistakes of your enemies. But if you enjoy big damage and quick games, this is the composition for you and well worth an S tier spot. Next up, we've got our last S tier comp on this list and first appearance for a Shadow Priest composition. Commonly known as Shadow Play, this composition likes to play around having two casters who are both extremely dangerous when left alone. Go on the Shadow Priest and you're going to be having Chaos Bolts for lunch. Go on the Warlock and your whole team is going to be rotted down. Shadow Priests, although squishy, have an abundance of defensive cooldowns for both themselves and their team. Swap, Fade, Dispersion, Master Spell for your healer, and Warlocks also have Wall, Spam Fear, Healthstone, Gate, Coil, both classes are just very difficult to kill. Add on top of this either a Mistweaver Healer or Restoration Shaman and you're going to have a very hard time managing to get through all their cooldowns before you inevitably die. Well, what's there to say really on the offensive side of things? If left to cast and PvE, Shadow can deal some of the most damage in Arena, doing upwards of 20k stable DPS. And trust me, I speak from experience. Add this to then a Destruction Warlock able to hit bolts for over 60% of your health and you have enough pressure to fill an air balloon. This, if you tank their damage, is one of the most dangerous compositions and often forces its enemies to have to play extremely defensive. Shadow play is just one of those compositions that spams damage and eventually wins. Don't overcomplicate it trying to set up crowd control chains or anything fancy, just spam damage and survive and you'll be the victors. Moving on, we've now got our A tier compositions. These are by no means bad, However, they are seen less in both tournament and ladder play for a few reasons. Let's talk about why. Seen occasionally on ladder, this composition brings almost everything. Having two incredibly hard to kill classes combined with mana rift often looking to either burst you down or simply outlast you and win on mana, this is despite being an A tier composition can beat most of the S tier stuff. Defensive wise, this is still quite hard to kill but mainly due to the mobility of both classes. So comps with a lot of lockdown, say Rogue Mage for instance, can easily lock you down inside of a stun and score a kill. On the offensive side of things, we have good consistent damage and great burst damage. This comp does fine on the damage front. However, still lacks some consistent damage that the Death Knight when paired with either of these classes would otherwise bring. So what's the main reason this is an A tier comp? Well. First of all, both Demon Hunter and Wind Walker are best paired with a Death Knight. Death Knight brings so much more when paired with both and just rounds out the comp a lot better. So that's why we put it at A tier. However, as mentioned, it still works fine and you'll have good success. Seen commonly on ladder and competitive play, this composition is just a slightly weaker rogue mage, hence why we've got it in our A tier list and also has a lot more counters, with Windwalkers only having Leg Sweep. However, let's see why. Great defensive utility from the Windwalker helping the Mage to kite and stay alive. Combine this with the Druid's healing and Mage's pills can make it extremely hard for any of the free classes to get tunneled down. However, what it does struggle with is some melee caster comps. Things like Rogue Mage and even Double Caster can often outpressure you and end up winning. However, it's still extremely good into melee cleaves. On the offensive side of things, Windwalkers just lack that consistent pressure and stuns that a rogue bring in this comp. They also don't have as much crowd control, so you don't always have that blind or smoke bomb to fall back on when you can't get your CC. Also, with both Paralyze and Polymorph sharing diminishing returns, your CC chains can often be lacking. So yeah, this comp is an A tier comp, but has a lot of potential nonetheless. Depending on what you're up against, you can still do very, very well. If it wasn't for the high amount of caster cleaves, you would definitely see this much higher on our list. Known as TSG, this composition has been a staple of WoW Arena for many years now, 
combining two melees who like to track down one target. Although, the healers have often changed throughout the years. The current best for this is for sure the Mistweaver Monk. Defensive wise, this composition is very strong. Great utility from the Death Knights, AMZ, Interrupts and the Warriors Jewel, Fear and War Banner can allow you to survive decently well defensively. With monks bringing very strong heals and decent cooldowns, you can often survive a very long time. This has the highest single target damage of any cleave in the game, with the drawback of having probably the least mobility. If you're up against something that can't kite or get away, then this comp is the best cleave that you can play. Great burst and huge cooldowns like Sharpen, combined with the very strong consistent damage of both classes, can make this comp a nightmare to deal with. Well, you might be thinking, why is it not higher then? Well, this comp into our current meta is just not great. With all the spell cleaves, mages, elementals and restoration druid compositions, you can often struggle for uptime and just simply get kited to death. But depending on what you're facing, this comp is still one of the better melee cleaves. R Impala for short, this is just another rogue mage variant, this time with a fire mage bringing some great burst damage and insane kill potential. The only thing this comp is lacking is slows, lots of instant crowd control and many cooldowns to rotate through, let's break down why we've put this at the A tier. Fire mage holy paladin synergy is very good, coupled with evasion and cloak from the rogue, you have a lot of defensive cooldowns to rotate through, however what you do lack is that spammable crowd control coming from the druid helping to reduce some damage, and the Frost Mage being able to consistently kite. Great burst damage, great instant crowd control, this comp has all three forms of CC with the Paladin bringing Blinding Light and Hammer of Justice. You can often do very strong crowd control chains and score kills, this comp has it all on the offensive front. But we've placed this at A tier just because of how much weaker it is in comparison to the Frost Mage Resto Druid variant. It's very hard to play against Cleaves as they're going to be having very good uptime onto your mage, as you don't have those strong slows and roots provided by the Frost Mage. Eventually, rotating through your defensives, this coupled with the Fire Mages only having one block and the very high chance of overlapping defensive cooldowns if not played perfectly, this composition is just that tiny bit weaker into certain comps. Mage Warlock has always notoriously been quite strong. Bringing two casters with two different spammable crowd controls on different DRs is a recipe for success. However, not this time. We've ranked this A tier for a few reasons. Let's take a look why. Great defensive utility with both classes being able to spam CC to deny kills. However, with the lack of slows and kiting from both casters, you can often struggle with things with very high uptime and consistent damage. However, still quite tanky on the defensive side of things. Insane offensive damage, combining Greater Pyro with Chaos Bolt can deal some very high burst damage to unaware targets. The issue here is though both of these classes are required to cast a lot, and not only cast a lot, but with Greater Pyro and Chaos Bolts not being the fastest spells, you can often be shut down or line of sighted. However, this comp tends to do better the lower rating you are. This comp is just one of those that can either stomp or get stomped. Small maps can be the bane of your existence, as you lack stuns, slows and also instant damage, so people that just want to line of sight you and play for dampening can often just take the win. Just very map dependent and really depends on what you're facing, hence why we put this at the A tier. Working with almost all healers other than Priest, this composition is quite similar to Elemental Fire Mage, but has a lot more weaknesses in comparison. Let's take a look at why. Defensive wise, this comp is solid, Destruction Warlocks are notoriously tanky, Elementals are very mobile, so the only thing you should really be struggling against is classes like Rogue, with a lot of lockdown. Elemental brings all the utility to help your healer remain out of crowd control, and even those off heals if required, whereas Warlocks offer Coil and Spam feel Fear for pills. If able to cast, Destruction Warlocks can, as you may have already gathered, hit you quite hard. However, with Elemental not providing too much of a threat if left to free cast, the chances of you getting bolts is quite low. Just another one of those comps that gets worse the higher rating you get. So, why is it only A tier? Well, you can simply replace either of the classes with a mage and make yourself a better composition. It lacks instant damage and also can struggle to score kills if the lock is shut down. Another really strong composition seen quite frequently in competitive and ladder play, this is by far Boonkin's current strongest comp. 
and the first on our list. This is an A tier comp, but however, it's still strong for a number of reasons. Let's take a look why. Both Boonkins and Elementals can pe peel for each other very well. Boonkins with spam clones and heals, Elementals with spam heals, grounding, sheer and hex. The defensive play of this lineup is extremely strong. Very good when up against casters thanks to Boonkin's Celestial Guardian and the lockdown provided by Elemental. Also, as a large majority of your damage is instant, you can often do it without leaving the pillar. This comp has some extremely consistent damage going on and as they take so little damage themselves, can often win on mana. Also, teams that are vulnerable to root beam are a lot easier for setting up kills against. Setting up kills inside of bashes or lightning lasso and some star surges and a stormkeeper are also very dangerous. So, why is it not higher? Well, this comp tends to really struggle when up against death knights, mist weavers and restoration dread teams in general. The fact you can't utilize root beam or ever create any pressure on a death knight really sets you back. And with the best healers currently be bo being both Mistweaver and Restoration Druid, it's just not this comp's meta. Nonetheless, still a very strong composition. Last up for our A tier spot, we have a comp known as God Comp. This spell cleave relies heavily on doing long crowd control chains and kiting their enemy to score kills. It's incredibly tanky thanks to the large amount of defensive cooldowns of both DPS. Two blocks, mobility from the mage, fade, dispersion, swap, iron buck, yeah, it's got a lot. Add this to the spammable CC and slows and scoring a kill against this isn't going to be easy. Although not the strongest defensively, while this comp lacks in damage, it makes up for in crowd control, having some of if not the longest CC chains possible, often getting some damage out and then going for long CC chains to secure kills. It's just a good free classes paired with each other. This comp can do very well into certain melee cleaves, as well as other casters. Similar to Mage Destro, this comp just likes to spam damage, but however, has a lot more CC behind it, as well as stuns. So if you can't avoid the crowd control, prepare for a bad time. So why is it not higher? Well, in the sea of classes that are incredibly hard to kill, even without their healer healing them, this comp does struggle a bit. Classes like Windwalker can just pour away, Death Knight will completely outheal the damage, and things like Elemental and other mages will just line of sight you. However, not a bad composition by any means. Alright guys, that just about wraps up the first part of our 8.1 tier list, containing the best meta comps of both Europe and North America. As mentioned, don't be worried if your class wasn't here, as we'll be releasing part 2 with the rest of our comps, and making sure every class also has its own composition to run. But for now, thanks for watching and plus skill if you enjoyed this video.